And starting the next set for both tests this time, I've got the AMC 10A from 2021, Problem 16. And incidentally, also the 12A Problem 16. It's not the first time that's happened, it's happened before, but it is kind of interesting when it does happen. In the following list of numbers, the integer n appears n times in the list for n between 1 and 200 inclusive, which is how you should read that, by the way. Uh, then this is what it looks like. There's one one, there's two twos, there's three threes, four fours, and 200 two hundreds. What is the median of the numbers in the list? Well, the median is just the average of the two middle terms. Uh, we probably want to know how many terms are in the list. And let's just find that out first. So we've got one term here and we've got two twos, so that'll be two, and then three threes, that'll be three. Shoot, this is just the sum of the numbers from one to 200, which are the triangular numbers. You should remember the formula, it's n times n plus one over two. So when I plug the 200 into here, I'm going to get 200 times 201 over two. This is gonna make it 100 which is 20,100. Whoops, not that many zeros, that's too many zeros. So 20,100 is the total number of terms that we have, which means if we can get the 10,050th term uh, and be the average of that one and the term right after it. Now chances are, it might not be from these two, but chances are it's probably gonna be a integer, right? The 10,050th will be an integer and the 10,051st is the same integer. And then when you average, it's just, uh, you know, that integer because you're adding two of the same thing and then dividing by two. Um, so how are we going to find out what the 10,050th term is? Well, we're going to use a very similar process. I want to know what iteration we were on. For example, this three represents the third iteration, meaning that after I've added up one, two, and three, I've actually got the total number of terms after I've written all my threes. So I want to know after I've written all of my n's, right, or some number n, uh, that it needs to be approximately equal to this. Not exactly equal. It could be, but not likely. Uh, so you're going to have to do the same thing again. Not, this n is different than the one n we used before. It's just this is the the term that's going to get us close to this term number, right? Um, and so we're going to need to add, this again is how many numbers are written, right, in the list. And so if we add n times n plus 1 over 2, because this also represents how many numbers are in the list, uh, I want it to be approximately that. So I'm going to multiply by 2 and get n times n plus 1, is going to be approximately right back again to 20,100. So the question is, what would n be that gets us close to that? Well, let's just try something close like 150. Um, n times n plus one is gonna be 150 times 151. And I know that 150 squared is less than that, uh, but 150 squared is much easier to calculate. So 15 times 15 is 225 toss two zeros on, this is too big. I'd like to be just below it if possible. So because it's too big, 150 is not anywhere, it's way past this point in the term, past the 10,050th number in that sequence. So then let's try something smaller. Instead of 142, let's use 140. So we'll do uh, 140 times 141, but again, 140 squared is less than that. And 140 squared is a lot easier to calculate. We've been on this path before, right? So 14 squared is a 196. Toss two zeros on the end because you're squaring. This is 19600. Okay, so 19,600, that's close to this. It's got to be that when I get to this number here, it must be the answer. It has to be between the 140th and 150th iteration that we get to this number. And so it's going to be 142. Um, yeah, you could do some other fine tuning and checking, but the other numbers are not in the possible range. So we can be pretty confident it's going to be C on to the next problem.